thousands of different things for thousands of different uses. There was nowhere else on earth quite like the black country. We made nails and chain, anchors, anvils and locks, pots and pans, bricks and glass, gas and coke, leather goods and soap. The list is endless. But it all started underfoot. Here's where we found a 10-yard seam of coal. It was the richest in Britain and known as the Staffordshire Thick. Some say that wherever you found this coal, you'd find the black country. There was also ironstone, fire clay and limestone. Men and boys covered in soot with fierce white eyes turned the landscape inside out to reach it. And as mining and industry engulfed the countryside, trees and grass withered and died, and good farmland gave way to desolation, smoky chimneys and heaps of colliery waste. But amongst all this, everywhere you looked, people were making things. It was like every house was its own little factory, and the work never stopped. Thousands of people toiled around the clock, with one shift of workers replacing another as they kept the furnaces and the forges going and the hammers pounding away. It was a scene unlike any other. In 1868, a visiting American called Elihu Burritt famously said that the black country was black by day and red by night, and that it could not be matched for vast and varied production by any other space of equal radius on the surface of the globe. We led the world in other ways too. We were the first place anywhere to harness the power of steam, and the world's first steam engine, invented by Thomas Newcomen, was put to work on a nearby colliery in 1712. These huge machines, pouring out smoke and steam, pumped water from the mines and powered blast furnaces, forges and mills. Later in the 18th century, great engineers like James Bridley and Thomas Telford cut through the landscape with miles of canals. Then came the tramways and the railways, they all moved raw materials across the region and sent out finished goods to be sold all over the world. Now, it was never just one place, this black country. It was a collection of about 20 towns and villages, large and small, each with their own identity. It was closely into Birmingham, but still separate and different. You'll have a hard time finding two men or women that'll agree on exactly where the black country starts or ends. But you can be sure that it's like no other place on earth. It was a tough, noisy and dangerous place to live, but people kept on coming here in search of opportunity. In the 19th century, the population of nearby towns like Wolverhampton and West Bromwich exploded. They grew so fast that people were crowded into ramshackle houses which were damp and without sanitation. Nowadays, we call them slums. Some houses even sank into the ground at crazy and crooked angles as the old mine workings beneath them gave way. Yet, despite all these difficulties, the men and women of the black country showed a mighty spirit whether it was boxing, pigeon racing, or football, they knew how to make the best of it. They also took a fierce pride in their work, and the things they made, and the skills they developed, earned them a worldwide reputation. In 1829, they supplied the United States with its first steam locomotive, the Starbridge Lion. And in 1851, they made the cast iron pillars and the glass for the Crystal Palace. Some of the finest glassware that's ever been produced was made here. And the anchors and chains for many famous ships, including the Titanic, were forged in Cradley, Netherton and Tipton. <laughs>